Now that you've had an introduction to batteries, it's time to construct a galvanic cell. This seems to be an incredibly long list of questions. I'm going to explain to you how to answer each one of them, and I bet by the end you'll be able to make your own battery. The cell couple that we're going to be using for this battery is a copper 2 plus copper and a mercury 2 plus mercury. Our first step is to look up the reactions in a reduction table and to list them with the most negative on top and most positive on the bottom. So where can you find your reduction table? The easiest place is to go to your resources in your ebook and you see that you have standard reduction potentials. Our chart is organized so that the more negative is on top and our more positive reduction potentials are on the bottom. Here we see the reduction potential for our copper half cell. The mercury half cell is not on this particular table. I looked it up in a more expanded version on the internet. The value of the mercury 2 plus mercury half cell is plus 0.85. So when I list my half reactions, I'm going to put the most negative on top and the most positive on the bottom. Plus 0.34 is closer to negative than plus 0.85. If you list them this way, then the anode is always on the top for a galvanic cell, and it's your most negative reduction potential. The cathode is always on the bottom for a galvanic cell and is your most positive reduction potential. So we can label these anode and cathode. Step three, you'll probably be asked the voltage of the cell. Remember that the E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode. Right now we're working at standard state, which is why the naught is there. So we have our cathode and our anode assigned, and our voltage is plus 0.85 minus a positive 0.34. So this is a 0.51 volt battery at standard state. Now as far as understanding which way the reactions go, the bottom reaction can be left alone because reduction occurs at the cathode. And we did, after all, get these reactions from the reduction potential table. So they come as reductions. The top reaction, however, has to be reversed because oxidation occurs at the anode. So the cathode half reaction I will leave as is. Remember that reduction is gaining electrons so I will have the electrons on the reactant side. The anode half reaction, I am going to exchange the reactants and the products. That's what I mean by flip it. So oxidation is losing electrons, so I'm gonna take this top reaction and turn it around. You notice that the copper solid is now on the reactant side, and the copper two plus and the two electrons are now on the product side. And it's definitely an oxidation because we are going from copper zero to copper plus two. You might be asked to write the net redox reaction. So you simply have to add the two reactions together such that the electrons cancel out. In this case, it's pretty easy because we have two electrons in and two electrons out. So we just have to take our reactants and write them down here on the reactant side and our products and write them down here on the product side. That is our net balanced redox reaction. There was a time in WebAssign when WebAssign couldn't tell the difference between mercury 2 plus plus copper and copper plus mercury 2 plus. So students had to write the oxidizing agent first. You notice if you take the cathode component and write it as your first species, then you've put the oxidizing agent first, because remember, the oxidizing agent gets reduced. You might be asked the moles of electrons for this reaction. This is the number of electrons that you use to balance your net redox reaction. You notice we had two moles of electrons on each side, so two moles of electrons are transferred. Now we just need to put this with our battery. Typically, the anode is associated with the black wire, and the cathode is associated with the red wire. 
The anode is also associated with the negative sign and the cathode with the positive sign. So remember that our anode half reaction was our less positive one, and we're going from copper to copper two plus and two electrons. So if we think about what's happening on this side of the reaction, we have a bar of copper metal and it's producing copper two plus when the reaction occurs. So our copper two plus concentration is increasing and our copper solid concentration is decreasing. We're also producing electrons by this reaction. So the electrons are gonna flow along the wire from the anode to the cathode. And what do they do when they get to the cathode compartment? The mercury two plus, which is in solution, reacts with the two electrons to make mercury liquid. So we don't really have a metal bar of mercury liquid here. What we typically have is an inert electrode and a cup that is containing the mercury liquid as it's generated. You notice that what's happening on this side is mercury two plus is reacting. So it is decreasing in concentration and we're producing liquid mercury. So that would be increasing in concentration. And our electrons have arrived and they are on the reactant side. Now, as far as thinking about what's happening with your liquid junction or salt bridge, remember that the salt bridge cations always migrate toward the cathode. So if we had potassium chloride here, potassium is of course our cation and chloride is our anion. So our cation will migrate toward the cathode. The K plus is arriving to replace the mercury two plus that has been reacted away. And our chloride goes to the anion compartment where oxidation occurs. And that's because we're producing copper two plus and nature doesn't like a buildup of ionic charge. So the chloride is there to balance that out so that the solution is neutral in charge. The last part of this is the cathode electrode usually grows. We are making mercury liquid here. So what we would see as the reaction occurs is that our container is filling up and getting more full of mercury liquid, whereas the anode electrode usually shrinks. We're taking copper and making copper two plus. So this metal strip of copper is going to get eaten away and become smaller as the reaction occurs. I say usually because sometimes redox reactions don't involve making a solid or a liquid species. Sometimes they go from one ion to another. Just remember that on your cathode compartment, your product is forming, which is typically a liquid or solid, so it's growing. And on your anode compartment, typically your solid or liquid component is shrinking or disappearing. Last part of this, the cathode compartment decreases in redox ion. If we look at this, our mercury two plus is reacting away. So our reactant is disappearing. The anode compartment increases in redox ion because we are making the cation copper two plus. So that was a long, long list of questions, but I hope you saw that it didn't take very long to go through it and answer every last one of these questions. If we relate this to the redox table, Please note that spontaneous reactions always have electrons falling downward from right to left. So copper has electrons that are spontaneously transferring to mercury 2 plus. Reduction occurs at the cathode and oxidation at the anode. The difference in voltage between these two is plus 0.51 volts. So now it's your turn. Construct a galvanic cell, and this time we'd like you to use the silver one plus silver couple and the chromium three plus chromium couple. So go back and look at the steps I listed and figure out which one is going to be the anode and which one is the cathode. 
When you're thinking about the anode reaction, you should think about, is that oxidation or reduction? And be careful because you should be listing these redox reactions with the more negative on top and the more positive on the bottom. I didn't give them to you that way. So you'll have to think about how to order these. Now that you've identified the anode half reaction, I hope you can identify the cathode half reaction. What is the net redox reaction? Now this one might be a little bit of a challenge for you. Suppose that I asked you to make a compound of aluminum and chloride. Well, you know you need to crisscross the charges, so you would need three chlorides for every aluminum. You need to think the same way about this. Remember that the silver reaction involves one electron whereas the chromium reaction involves three electrons. So I suggest you consider taking three times the amount of silver reaction that you do the chromium reaction. I have another hint for you on this question. Remember when we did balancing reactions, atoms in must equal atoms out, but also charge in must equal charge out. So if I look at A, I'm going from plus one to plus three. That's not balanced with charge. So I think if you look at this from a charge aspect, you'll be able to find the correct reaction. And hopefully it's going to make sense with your reactions at the anode and cathode. This next part asks you to relate the diagram for a galvanic cell to some things that are occurring in the galvanic cell. So you need to identify the anode and the cathode, and of course you're given the charges on either side of the load to figure that out. As far as how many electrons are transferred, you should really know that from the reaction before. How many electrons did you have on each side to balance when you made the net redox reaction? And finally, which way do the electrons travel? Well, hopefully you know they go from anode to cathode, so that will help you. Your last question is, which way do the anions in the salt bridge migrate? So, of course, I haven't told you what's in the salt bridge, but it's some cation that's positively charged and some anion that's negatively charged. We want to know which way do the anions migrate. Last is which solution becomes more concentrated in ions as the reaction progresses. Remember that on one side, we typically go from a metal to an ion and electrons. And on the other side, we go from an ion plus electrons to a metal. I really am asking you, which side are we making ions on instead of reacting the ions away? If you're having difficulty going through these questions, please note that I do have a worksheet on battery construction with a couple examples and a key. You'll find those on the Moodle website.